morning, every, everyone. Uh, the, the purpose of the speech this morning yeah, uh, is not to talk too much about EasyMind unless you have some, uh, some specific questions that you can raise at the end of the, of the talk. Uh, what I would like to share with you this morning is more the vision of the company, what we are trying to do, uh, what kind of problem we are uh, trying to solve. And uh, I would say that uh, yeah, almost uh, everything is in, uh, is in that slide, basically the situation of our roads at the moment is like this and we would like the cities to be like that. And uh, the whole purpose of the company is uh, basically how do we achieve that or at least how can we help to achieve that. And, uh, okay, to begin with, uh, I would like to share a little bit my, my personal experience in Singapore. I've been living there for 11 years now, and it's probably the place on earth where the policy makers and the urban planners have put the, I mean, the biggest uh, effort to discourage people from using their car and encourage people to use public transportation and for that they have massively invested uh, in a, a metro network. Uh, they have uh, currently 180 kilometers of lines and they're going to double by 2025. So it's a huge, uh, it's a huge work. Uh, the metro is clean, it's cheap, it's fast, it's efficient, it's convenient. Uh, there are thousands of bus lines, I mean buses, uh, there are around 40,000 taxis. So this is what they've done uh, on the public transportation side. But in the meantime, uh, they've made the utilization of private cars extremely expensive. If you believe that your cars in Europe are expensive, just go there. <laughs> and it's between <coughs> twice and three times the, the price you would pay here just to buy the car. And uh, then you need to use the car. And, uh, and for that they've invented uh, <coughs> and the, the road toll. Like, uh, I mean, London claims that uh, they invented uh, the, 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 the road toll for uh, access to the city some years ago. But that's totally bullshit. <laughs> uh, Singapore <laughs> did it 10 years before London. <laughs> uh, so cars are expensive, uh, using your car is expensive, parking your car is expensive, uh, maintaining your car is expensive. They've really tried hard to discourage people from using their car and that doesn't work. Uh, year after year, I mean, the, this one is Singapore, the other ones I'm not so sure, but <laughs> this one definitely is Singapore. ERP is basically the road toll. Uh, year after year, there's more and more cars in the street. So the question is, uh, why? Uh, and basically, my answer is that in, uh, in areas uh, with uh, low or dispersed demand, like in the suburbs, not in the city center, but in the suburbs, uh, the public transportation at no, not at your doorstep. You need to, th th there is this famous last mile problem. And uh, walking to reach the next uh, metro station or to, to reach the next bus station or the taxi stand is not always an option. Uh, typically in Singapore, because of the climate, you can walk, I would say, a maximum of, what, 300, 400 meters before your shirt is totally wet. Okay. And this is when the <coughs> weather is dry, because if there is a tropical shower, obviously, within 10 meters, you are totally done. Um, so walking, in, walking can be a concern because of the weather, because of the distance. Uh, in Singapore, uh, maximum you would live, uh, say, two kilometers away from the, the, the nearest uh, MRT station. But in an American suburb like in San Francisco, uh, in, the, in the Bay Area, you can easily live uh, five kilometers, ten kilometers away from, uh, from the train station. And then you just cannot walk. It can rain, weather can be cold, or some people just cannot walk. Um, so, you would 
think that uh, let's use uh, car sharing or bike sharing, but for suburbs that just doesn't work because all the commuters travel in the same direction at the same hours. So basically whenever you want to pick up a bike the station is empty. Whenever you want to drop off your bike the station is full. And uh, in the evening it's the other way around. So you might think, okay, I'm going to take my car and drive to the train station. If I take the example of uh, the, the Bay of San Francisco, uh, we have a customer over there, we work closely with the Contra Costa County Transportation Authority. They have spent billions of dollars to build uh, a railway train called the BART, B-A-R-T, Bay Area Rapid Transit. And uh, the problem is uh, because of the uh, uh, the, the American uh, way of living, uh, the single family homes, uh, the suburbs are enormous and people easily live five kilometers away from the train station. So they, they take their car and expect they were going to find a parking lot at the train station. But from 6 a.m. onwards, all the parking lots are full. So you end up on the highway with uh, millions of other drivers. So on one side, the CCTA has spent tens of billions to build the train. They have spent tens of billions to build highways. Highways are full, the train is empty, because there is no more parking lot. So this is the another uh, typical uh, case of the last mile, uh, last mile problem. So at the end of the day, uh, people will keep using their car. And uh, that's why there's basically more and more cars in the streets causing uh, traffic jams, congestions, pollution. <coughs> because basically, well, probably most of you have already seen uh, those two pictures. This is uh, 60 commuters traveling in a private car. This is 60 commuters traveling in a bus. If you look at the space they use on the streets, the problem is obvious. <coughs> So the, uh, the big OEM uh, uh, manufacturers, car manufacturers uh, like Ford, uh, they have a solution, uh, autonomous cars. So they believe that autonomous cars uh, basically will solve the traffic in city centers because they can park, them. I mean they can return to their original uh, station and park by themselves. But actually, if you look at what happened in the morning, you will drive your car, I mean your, your, your car will drive you to your office and will return uh, to the original parking lot. So that means the car will travel twice as much as now and now it's already congested. <coughs> so basically the model doesn't work. And that would be probably the situation uh, if we have uh, a lot of pri uh, private autonomous cars in the streets. So what we believe uh, is that we can fix that uh, not just by bringing uh, AVs in the streets but by pairing <coughs> AVs with uh, existing conventional uh, public transportation systems. I don't believe that in the near future uh, AVs will be able to pick you anywhere and drop you off anywhere else. Uh, it, that's not going to happen soon. Uh, in the meantime, AVs can be used as a shared transportation system to bring you uh, to the nearest uh, metro station or train station or bus station or taxi stand or carpooling station, whatever. So, we, we believe that uh, in the future, commuters in the morning will just <laughs> grab their smartphone, order a journey from home, to the office, door to door, and likely a, a few minutes later, an AV will fetch them at their doorstep, maybe together with some other passengers, bring them together to the bus station, and the bus will take them to the train, and at the train station, there will be another autonomous shuttle that will take them all the way to the office. So, in our vision, AVs, at least for the next uh, five to ten years, uh, will be mainly used uh, for that last mile uh, problem. And hopefully we can 
get rid of a lot of cars in the cities and if there is less cars in the cities that means less congestion, that means buses can go faster, better service, but also if people do no longer have to walk to reach the bus station because they, they are accessible using AVs, that means that uh, uh, transport operators can stretch a little bit the average distance between bus stations. So instead of having one bus station every kilometer, you can have maybe a bus station every two or three kilometers. So this is a second reason why uh, the, the, the speed, the average speed of the bus might be higher. Less stops, less traffic. So where are we now? Uh, easy mile. Uh, so we we have developed uh, 15 prototypes of uh, our vehicle that we have extensively tested in many uh, geographies. We have vehicles in Japan, in Dubai, in Singapore, in uh, Finland, uh, in uh, Sweden, Norway, uh, Holland, in Ustelingwerf in Holland. We have started a pilot site uh, some weeks ago. Uh, in California, in, uh, I don't remember, uh, many countries, uh, many climates, uh, extreme heat in Dubai. I mean, we have spent the, the whole summer operating in Dubai just to see what happened with the battery, with the temperature in the cabin. Um, uh, we have uh, ongoing operations in Singapore since a year, so we have experienced a lot of tropical showers, uh, humidity, heat, everything. We will spend uh, the whole winter in Finland uh, trying to see how the vehicle behave uh, in the snow, in the ice, in the fog. Um, so we are at the moment gathering a lot of uh, feedback uh, on the vehicle and in the meantime we are developing a second generation of a vehicle that should be uh, ready <coughs> by April next year. So overall uh, before April next year, we will have uh, 40, 40 uh, vehicles in operation because after the 15 prototypes, we have set up a production line uh, and we expect to produce an additional 25 vehicles before the next generation hit the roads. Thank you. In time. In time. <laughs>